BYU to get offensive rebounds and get easy baskets here in their building and then hit open shots. Make BYU pay for double teaming Neville. You go double team, Neville kicks it out. You've got to knock down those deep open shots. Look at Coach Ray Giacoletti, head coach of the Utah Utes in his third season. We're in the nice red blazer tonight. Fortunately for him, he's not at UT like Bruce Pearl. He can wear a decent color like red and not that Tennessee orange. Jeff Buzdelic came to town, and after his Air Force Falcons lost to Utah, you know, he got on the media around here saying, hey, give this guy a chance. He's got a conference coach of the year, took a team with very low expectations and had them finish second in the conference last season. Here's a look at Sean Green, told you off the top, leading the nation in three-point field goal percentage, 56.4. 50% in Mountain West Conference play. Johnny Bryant also good from outside, and our first look at Lee Kamar. Kamar just a sophomore out of Mesa, Arizona. Has 14 blocks this season. He's also shooting 50% from three-point range. The two big men, the two sophomores, gonna get it on for us tonight on the mountain. Neville wins that one, sending it back to Bryant. Here we go. Glad to have you with us on the mountain in Salt Lake City tonight. The Utes and the Cougs. And right away, down to the paint, and one loop. Neville, a big two to start it off. He's fouled by Playstead. He'll go to the line. And one of the big keys in this basketball game will be the fouls. Neville and Playstead, whoever goes out of this game and has to sit down, it's going to be a big disadvantage. And they'll take it right at each other. And if one of those guys gets in trouble early, it can make the difference in this ball game. Playstead with a big, quick foul, and Neville took it right at him. And he converts. So a three-point play for Luke Neville in the Utes. An early 3-0 lead. Austin Ainge will push it up the floor. There's Keena Young way up top over to Kamar. Young working on Green. Another matchup we're anxious to see. Nice little kiss off the glass. Four number three, and it's 3-2 Utah. And that's, that's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Sean Green's drawn the assignment to cover Keena Young down in that post. And Keena Young's such a good player with his back to his basket. Got great drop step, great quickness. That's going to be a fun one to watch this afternoon or tonight. How about the pass? Throwing it in there for Neville, and Neville doing the rest. Jamming it down with two hands. That's five points for the Utes, all five for Neville early. Nice assist to the sophomore, Sean Green. And no weak side help from BYU's defense. Place that was trying to front Neville, and you got to get somebody on that backside to help out. <laughs> two can play at that game. The feet from Balderson in a one-hander. By Playstead, he had back-to-back one-handed dunks against the Air Force Falcons in Provo on Saturday, electrifying the 22,700 Cougar fans. Luca Dercha up top and down to Neville. Once again, Hilbert tries to get it to Green off the back of Ainge. Turnover for Utah. There's Ainge, finds Kamar in the corner. Whoa, how about that roll? Off the rim, off the glass, and a three-pointer for Lee Kamar. It's 7-5 to five, BYU. And those are the bounces you usually get at home. Lee Kamar on the road gets a, a shooter's touch bounce that goes high off the rim and back in. against Air Force, and that was, you saw that quite a bit. The Falcons, one of the hottest shooting teams in the nation, couldn't buy a bucket. They had so many balls come out of the net that looked to be in. No whistle there, they're letting them play. Ball will stay there with BYU, 16 seconds on the shot clock. Well, and this is in transition. Austin Ainge going cross-court skip pass to Lee Kamard. And watch this thing, he's gonna bounce high off the rim, hit the glass, and go back in. That's a home court bounce that Lee Kamar gets here in the Huntsman Center. You know, the discussion now with the officials, David Hall signaled that that ball went back over to BYU as Trent Playstead lost the handle, and now 
the, the officials conference together. Somebody had a better look. They get together, and that's the way it works. They get together and said, hey, I had a real good look at that, and uh, it looked like place that lost the basketball. Now, take a look. He did have the... Neville deflected it, but it was in Playstead's hand, and it went off of Playstead's hand, out of bounds, and the officials get together, and they make the right call. Absolutely. Dave Rose upset with that one, but he can't see what we see. The right call, a good call, a two-point lead for BYU. There's Stephen Way. The other Aussie on the team, and another turnover for Utah. Balderson comes up with it. Young, quick. Off the back of the rim, rebound Utah. There's Johnny Bryant. Ali won't go. Just a little too far out in front of the rim for Neville to come up with. It was Neville was running the lane. He got a reward for that in the past. Just not a great one. Angel's shot is off, and Lee Kamar continues to fight underneath. Offensive rebound. Oh, and Ray Jack let us talk all week, well, since Saturday, in preparation for this game, about the fact that Utah has got to box out and get defensive rebounds. They cannot allow BYU second chance points. And, and there's a second chance basket for BYU right here early. Neville, the hook won't go, and fighting underneath is Green. Green with the putback. Hustle play by Sean Green. Didn't give up on it, went in. Placed it, didn't secure the rebound, and Green able to tip it away. And that's just a hustle play underneath by the sophomore. Well, you talk about these Cougars on the boards, 14-0, went out rebounding opponents, placed it way off on that one. And a rebound here to Utah. We've seen this before, and off the glass for another. And so far, BYU's elected to play behind Neville, will place that, and just force Neville to shoot it over the top. You battle him early before he gets the basketball, push him out a little further than he feels comfortable with, and just make him shoot it over the top. He converts on that one. There's Young fouled. So one apiece for the two big men. That's Neville's first foul. Place that's got one, too. A two-hander, a one-hander. Are you... A pair of nines lighting up the scoreboard here in the John M. Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City, the campus of the University of Utah. Well, Luke Neville, seven points in a hurry. Well, he's been averaging 16.8 points a game for this Ute team. He's just so good if he catches the ball in a good position. And, and BYU's trying to, to keep him out, play behind him. You see this nice kiss off the glass. Important for Luke Neville and Trent Playstead to stay out of foul trouble. Uh, you put one of those guys in the, they need to be out there guarding one another. You bring anybody else into this game, and it's a mismatch down low. Luke Nelby, see his line, seven points on three of six. He is a force down there. Well, he just picked up his first foul right before we went to break. Playstead has one. Neville scored every time he shot the ball against San Diego State in the loss. Only problem was he only took four shots. Got into foul trouble early. Fouled out against New Mexico. Here's something you don't see very often. Keeney Young. Missing a free throw, an 86.1% free throw shooter is Young, the senior out of Beaumont, Texas. All right, Keeney Young, a nice job right before the break where he knew the shot blocker Neville was coming over and instead of just going up with it, made the pump fake, drew the foul, gets a foul on Neville and he gets to the free throw line. Only one of two on that trip, however. BYU going to go with a 2-3 zone right now. Way gets it into Neville. This time, Young working on him. Place that down to help out. The, the two, two on the line for Ricky Johns, the senior with a big two shot. But one area that I've really seen Luke Neville improve is his ability to read the defense and pass out of a double and triple team. He just is getting so much better at finding the open man on the perimeter. Did a great job that time of kicking it out to Johns. Young back on green. He draws Neville, finds his open guy. It's Playstead. He's fouled as he goes up. Trent Playstead will go to the line, who hit two big free throws, a 50% shooter going in, two big ones with 35 seconds to go against the Air Force. What? And I watched Ray Giacoletti talk to uh, Luke Neville here, and, and he said, hey, you need to be aware of where Trent Playstead is. He's back on that low block. You can't be too quick to go over there and double-team Keenan Young. And, and, and that's a tough thing that BYU you know, gives other teams. You got two good post players, and you have to kind of double team both, or, or they'll, they'll cause you all kinds of problems down there. 
So Neville wanting to go help, and when he's helping, they're dishing the ball over to Trent Playstead. Playstead goes one of two from the line. So not at 11. 241 games in this series. Way off the glass. Stephen Way predicted to be the Mountain West Conference newcomer of the year. Nice little touch there. Well, he's just a freshman, but they really love his understanding of the game. Very mature freshman, and that's why he's out there. BYU stepping on the line on the drive. Jimmy Balderson trying to penetrate. He puts that right foot on the end line. Balderson had a good game in the tourney at the Pepsi Center for Dave Rose. 13 points against the U. 16 offensive rebounds for Utah in that one, though. How important are those boards going to be tonight? BYU, no field goals in the last three minutes. Trailing by two. Utah ball. Johnny Bryan will push it up. Lawrence Bora checks into the game. That's number 11 with the ball. He'll try a three. Rattles out. This call coming up on Trent Playstead. Neville looked to be over the back of Playstead, who seemed to have position. But that's number Let's two on the sophomore. Playstead's down low. Let's see Neville here. Yeah, that, that should have gone the other way on that one. Playstead had the inside position. Neville pushed him off the block and then in side position got his arm over and then it, Trent placed it hooked that arm and that's where the call came but clearly Neville pushed in the back before and so that's big big for BYU because Trent placed it goes to the bench here and uh, this is where it's a tough matchup and this is where Utah really needs to look to Neville to get it down in the post to him. Bryant nice jumper from the elbow offensive rebound Neville Luke Ivanovich in there in replace in place of Trent Playstead, who's on the bench now with that second foul. You're right, the hook is, is where they got yeah, it. They, they got the end body. of that, and they got Trent Playstead as he hooked the arm of, of Neville. And so for Utah, they gotta be aware of, of what the situation is now. And they gotta look to Neville and try to get him the basketball here in the offensive set. Kamar down to the floor. There's a rebound for Vuk. The junior out of Serbia, Vuk Ivanovic. Mike Rose also into the game, nephew of Dave Rose, and down to Keena Young, once again on Sean Green. Once again gets it to roll, that's two more for Keena. Right, for Keena Young, that, that is a tough matchup for anyone. Sean Green, the sophomore, doing his best to stay in front and force Keena Young to shoot over the top, but, but Young has really developed that 10 to 15 foot game this last year. Rose down to help out on Neville, and there's Way. Way with two more. Stephen Way with four now. Keeney Young leading the team in scoring, averaging 16.1 points a game with seven. So far in this one, Luke Neville also with seven for Utah. Another jumper, this one off. Rebound to Kamar. And he's fouled. Boy, Lee Kamard is so much fun to watch. Three-point percentage, 50%. He's third on the team with 9.2 points a game, 14 blocks, averaging three assists per game, one and a half steals per game. He's doing it all in just so much hustle. He energizes these Cougars. One more time. Here's Bora on the foul. Come on, one more time. And, and one of the things that Kamard... Everybody knew he was a great scorer coming out of high school. He was a great shooter. He was rated as one of the top shooting guards in the Western United States coming out of high school. And, and I think he's really surprised people with how well he plays defense. He's just such a competitor defensively, and he's so long. And two fouls now on Lawrence Bora. He picks up that one against Lee Kamar. But, but his defense is where he surprised people. There's a nice two. Nice range for Vuk Ivanovic. First two points for the junior. He's in, in place of Trent Playstead. Two for Bora as well. Steven
Kevin Way has four. Daniel Dean, whose father was a great Utah Ute, also played with the Jazz a little bit. Greg Dean scored 1,000 points in his career at Utah. Kamar strips it away, saving it as Neville. Under 10 on the shot clock we go. Curtis Eaton, the freshman. He'll drive. Contested, but puts it off the glass and in. Over top of Ari. Oh, look out. JT, Jonathan Tavernari, 0 for 3 against Air Force on Saturday. Still leading the Mountain West Conference from behind the three-point arc in league play at 57%. Hits a huge one. If he heats up, it's downright scary for the U. There's Eatman, Kamara all over him. Dean over to Eatman as we go under 10. Seven on the shot clock now. Going to see the athleticism of Eatman and what they really like about him is his ability to take the ball to the basket with great athleticism. Well, Trent Playset and BYU saying and Lee down Kamard the stretch with, we come. Yeah, Lee Kamard with three points for the Cougars right now. One of the stats we're, we're watching and keeping a close eye on is rebounding. And at that break, these two teams are knotted up five rebounds apiece. And both coaches talked this week about how important that rebounding battle would be in this one. Way almost loses it and does. Rose comes out of the pile with it. BYU, one point lead and the ball. Corner pocket. Tavernari can't get his second three try to go, but an offensive rebound, BYU. Rose's three won't go. Daniel Dean going up tall, pulling down the board, fouled by Tavernari. That's a Cougar foul, number 45, Jonathan Tavernari. Well, we talk about the hustle of Lee Kamard. Coach Dave Rose also very happy with the hustle of number 45. Jonathan Tavernari, the freshman out of Brazil, in Bishop Gorman High School, then in Las Vegas. We saw a three-point situation. It's going to be 0 for 2 now for Utah. JB's 3 won't fall. Ainge will push, fouled by Eatman. Well, Curtis Eatman, they're really happy with his play. He's gotten a lot more aggressive, they say, over the past couple weeks. And he's gotten a lot more playing time because of it. Versus New Mexico, he had a season high, 11 points, five rebounds, and five assists. Well, and this young team's been looking for depth, and he's, he's really emerged lately, and it gives him a nice guy off the bench that can penetrate, and he's a good defender. He's got good quickness. You can't do that. Tavernari comes out of that one smiling big. Two of three behind the arc. And this is a very unusual freshman. He is not afraid to shoot the ball. He is a very, very confident kid. The leading scorer in the state of Nevada at Bishop Gorman High School last year. And he comes in and he knows his job. If he's open, fire it up there. Boy, when he's hot, you said it, he can knock a, a bunch down in a hurry. Mom, a basketball coach, go figure, back in Brazil. And he had that confidence early this season, but he couldn't hit anything. Johnny Bryant shot. Off the back of the rim, rebound to Balderson. Tavernari, he was shooting all the time, wasn't hitting anything, benched for a couple games, and Rose will try a three, it won't go. Inside leverage for Foster, but rebound to BYU, and then a foul with the ball, Ivanovich is called for one. Well, and Daniel Dean takes the charge, and, and they love the hustle play of Daniel Dean. Just a freshman out of Park City, but he is a guy that'll be on the floor, he's all over the place. He'll dive for loose balls, he'll take the charge, he knows how to get it done down there. He's a heady basketball player, and he's a hustle guy. Watch him get over there, take the charge, and there it goes the other way for, for Utah. Nice position play by Daniel Dean. Daniel Dean, Mr. Basketball, his senior year. Played his high school ball at Judge Memorial High School in Park, or here in Salt Lake, rather. Three A state champs that same year. back into the game for Utah. That's Bryant with the ball. There's Jones, goes baseline. Back out to Neville, look out, over the top of Vuk. Another dunk for Neville, two more points. Nine now for the sophomore. Ivanovich dribbles around and that's number two for Luke. 
Well, look at the neck. Look at the neck of Luke Neville. How tough are they scrapping down underneath? He's got, claw marks. He's got, he's got claw marks on the neck. That's going to be two on Neville and two on Trent Place at all. Let's take a look. Was he in position? They're calling him for a block. He just got that knee out there. And uh, one thing, you don't want to have Luke Neville have to come out 15 feet away from the basket and cover a guy that's facing up to the basket. And uh, Ivanovich that time caught the ball outside and took him to the basket. You got to give Luke help faster on that one. He got that knee out there and that size 17 shoe. Kavanari, nice quick lay in. Eight points for Kavanari. And that's eight straight for BYU now. 23 to 19. Ricky Johns, who's found that shot once again, the lone senior on this squad. Well, and Johns just gets it to his foot, was just on the line. But, but you like that. You don't want a guy to be looking down to see where the line is. You just shoot it in the offense, and he did it that time for a two. Well, Ricky Johns from the Boogie Down Bronx. This time getting it to Luke Neville, the assist and the points. BYU out in front here at the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. Jimmy Balderson going to come through. And here's a screen, Tabernari, stop it right there, guys. You, you got a double team. This man should drop, this man should step out. What's gonna happen is they're both gonna follow the ball and leave Tabernari all alone. You gotta communicate, you gotta switch. If you're gonna switch those screens, you switch them. They leave Tabernari all alone on the perimeter and he buries the three. And those eight straight points all for Tabernari. BYU has outscored Utah 12 to seven since Trent Playstead left the game. Sophomore still on the bench with two fouls. Luke Neville for Utah also on the bench with two. Balderson hits his first. There's big Luke. Luke, they say they say the coaches are happy because there's snow on the ground because he, he rides a skateboard. <laughs> you imagine the 7-1 guy riding a skateboard down the hill here on campus. He was a big surfer back there in Australia, loves the water and loves his wheels, but they're glad the snow's out there because it scares them when they when he skates. <laughs> they want the sidewalks covered up. Can you imagine that? If you're driving your car and you look in your rearview mirror and you see a 7-1 guy coming up behind you on a skateboard, like, what is that? Well, he's mad because they don't make snowboard boots big enough for him. He wants to try snowboarding. The reason he came to Utah, of course, Andrew Bogut had a lot to do with it, but also because of the snow. He had never seen snow prior to coming here. Senior year, he came from Australia, a transfer student, exchange student in Marietta, Georgia, Kell High School. There's Dorcha. Over to Bryant, a little bit too long. Rebound to Austin Ainge. Tavernari. How about Keeney Young pulling it in one hand and gets another rebound. Goes back up. Charge on Keeney Young. Utah ball. There are about eight fouls before that one, <laughs> that one happened. That was a crazy series down on that end of the floor. And people were flying all over the place. They finally had to call something down there. Take your pick. Pick a foul, any foul. Yeah, and that, you know, you talk about passion. I mean, these guys are scrapping and scrambling down there. And, and finally, it just got so bad that they had to blow a whistle and call something down there. Johns to Sean Green. Nice feed. In and out, though. Knocked out of bounds. BYU ball. Last touch by the Utes. Boy, a lot of drama in this one. Coach Dave Rose and his Cougars coming to town trying to get a win against Ray Giacoletti and the Utes. Well, and in this series since 94, it hasn't mattered whether BYU's been a favorite coming in here or not. Utah's been able to handle them in this place. Keep in mind, these seniors for BYU never won in this building. Well, the seniors won a big one at home in Provo on Saturday against the number 13 team in the nation, Air Force Falcons. Reverse lay in, there's a senior. Trying to get his first win in the Huntsman Center, Keeney Young. Utah, the only other Mountain West Conference team to beat those Air Force Falcons. They did it shooting 70%. 
against the Air Force. They also had 19 turnovers in that game, a team that's had quite a bit of turnovers and their loss to San Diego State. They had a season high 21. If you're, if you're gonna beat Air Force, you, you do have to shoot out of your mind, and they did in this building. Let's take a look. That one goes off Austin Ainge, and Ainge talking to the officials and saying, hey, wait a minute, Sean Green touched that. And, uh, and Sean Green, he's just being quiet. He's saying, hey, I don't know, you know I don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Green, Green, just a great kid. I have had a chance to visit with him a little bit as we've done their games this year. And what a pleasant, great kid he is. And you know, both of these teams have high character, high quality uh, young men that are student athletes. Johnny Bryant, three try, too strong. Look at Keena Young, leaping, out leaping. Neville, who stood there flat footed. Murdoch will come up with it. Nice move, Keena Young, and a nice touch. Two more. What, what makes him so tough with his back to the basket is he can go either way. He can spin and drop step and shoot fade away to the inside to his left, and he can curl back to his right and shoot going to his right. So it's, you have to just play him straight up because he does not have a tendency at which side he wants to go. The hometown crowd trying to cheer on their youths. They trail by seven right now. There's Neville, Ivanovich on him, and here comes Green down the lane. He's fouled on the floor, though, by Keena Young up top. You take a look, and one thing, even Ovich knows he can't leave Luke Neville, and so that leaves Keen Young to have to cover Sean Green one-on-one. -on -one. He slides under, gets the foul with the body. Sean Green smart, taking the ball to the basket, and that's one of the problems Luke Neville gives you. He's so big down there, you know you can't leave him. You leave him, they're just gonna dish it off, and he's gonna throw it down, and even Ovich stayed right with him. Sean Green able to get to the basket and draw the foul. Green tried to chip away at that lead, a 13-4 run for BYU in the last seven minutes. There's an offensive rebound and a timeout called by Ricky Jones. We'll get your complete Mountain West recap every Saturday night on the Mountain Cap. Join Courtney George and Marius Payton for all the scores, highlights, and analysis from around the Mountain West Conference and beyond the Mountain Cap, Saturday at 11. Only on the mountain. Ray Giacoletti talking it over with his youth. He's four and one against BYU. The downstater from Peoria, Illinois. It was interesting to listen to Dave Rose this week. People were talking about this win streak that Utah's had. And and they were saying, what is it about the Huntsman Center? What it is it about the building? And he goes, it doesn't have anything to do with the building. Utah's been really, really good since 1994. They've had great teams, and great teams are tough to beat on their home floor. And so he credited the program for this win streak and not the building itself. Home teams have had a lot of success this season in the Mountain West Conference. Luka Dercha back in the game, a Serbian freshman. There's Ricky Johns, the senior. Big jumper. Well, he's comfortable right inside that arc, isn't he? There's another two. Uh, and, and he's the only senior on this Utah squad, and they need him to play well. He's, he's got to take a leadership role and produce for them and be consistent. Seven of the 13 players that have played for Utah are in their first season of college basketball. Buk Ivanovich. Well, he's got a nice touch for a big man from outside. That one rolls out. with the ball. Ben Murdoch, who had six minutes against the Air Force, just about his average, 6.7 in the 18 games he's played on. But Keenan Young, the senior, 11 points, leading the charge for the Cougars. They lead by five. Now, you're wondering what that young lady knows about basketball. Melissa Whittingham, Kyle Whittingham's daughter, the head coach of the Utah football team. Well, we've got three big games coming up Saturday on the mountain for you. Our coverage tips off at 1 when Wyoming takes on Air Force. Then at 3.30, these Cougars are back to host UNLV. And at 6, the U.